We're going to take a break now from modeling the rest of the face and we're going to put together and shape part of the face around an eyeball. So to start off with I'm going to hide what we've been working on with the rest of the head here and we really probably don't even need our references other than for just size so we'll turn everything off and I'm going to create most obvious candidate for an eyeball shape that's just going to be a UV sphere for a primitive here obviously it's way too big so we can scale that down at this point it's just arbitrary because I've turned my references off um, and in order to create the proper shape for the eyeball and also just for my own sanity and keeping track of where it's pointed I'm going to rotate this in the x-axis by 90 degrees so RX 90 and then from a front view we have the triangle fan at the bottom of this sphere pointed forward as if it were the iris of the eye. So we're basically going to kind of make an approximation of eyeball anatomy here by modeling both the sclera slash iris and also the lens of the eye. And uh, the sclera is the white part of the eye, we, what we call the whites of the eyes. So we're going to model that and we're going to model the lens and we're going to make them out of one object. You don't have to do it this way. You can have the lens and the sclera be separate objects if you want. I just find it a little easier to move things around and, and uh, keep track of things if I make it one object. So that's just my personal preference. That's how I'm going to show it to you. So to start off with, um, we need the geometry of two spheres and um, we're going to kind of edit both of them until they're no longer spheres here, but uh, in edit mode I'm going to duplicate this geometry first. So Shift D and that loads my cursor with a copy of all these vertices, but I'm just going to hit Escape so that they don't move and then I'm going to come in here in a wireframe mode and scale this sorry I've got my proportional editing on scale this up very very slightly so you can see a difference between the inner and the outer eyeball but it's very very slight okay now speaking of proportional editing I do actually need it here for a minute so let's make sure okay I've got to grab the outer lens portion um, so I'm going to turn my proportional editing back on and make sure that I've unchecked or sorry that I've checked connected only so that when I pull this forward like this I'm not going to be pulling the inner part just the outer part which I want to form the lens so I'm gonna create a little bit of a bulge here for the lens just kinda of like your actual eye has a little bit of a bump in the front okay and then just to kind of make things easier on myself I'm going to create a vertex group or a couple of vertex groups so let's create a new one we'll call this lens and since I have part of the lens selected right now I can hit control L and that will select everything that's actually connected to that portion of the lens we'll assign all these vertices to this vertex group now I can select a vertex inside on the sclera and select all of that. Create a new vertex group here. We'll call this sclera and assign all those vertices. What that allows me to do is I can come in here with my vertex groups and I can just select one or the other very quickly. And um, that's just for convenience. I may not even need it, but uh, if I do, I've got it. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually kind of make a Death Star type dent in the front of the iris. So I'm going to tap GY with this vertex selected and again I have um, connected only checked on my in my uh, proportional editing button here so that it's not going to bend the lens at all because the lens isn't actually physically connected to what I'm doing here. Okay and that is probably good enough. So I'm just kind of making a little cone here and let's actually hide the lens now at this point so that we can kind of see what we're doing here. I need a little more definition in here 
So I'm going to select all these faces, and then inset, tap I to inset. Oh, and I messed up there, didn't I? There we go. Select all these faces, tap I to inset, and I'm going to move my start my mouse far enough out that it will actually have a decent effect there. And I'm just going to straighten out this cone and then extrude this. Boy, I'm really clumsy today. I'm going to extrude this entire thing back. I want to flatten it out. Probably don't need to, but S, Y, 0 will flatten that out for me. And then that's the shape I've created. All right, so um, at this point we've got a, I'll hit Alt H to unhide the lens. We have a lens and a sclera slash iris pretty well created. That's actually really all the modeling that we need to do here. So now we're going to um, add our materials. So I'll go over to my shading workspace. And the first thing I'm going to do is shift to a rendered view because um, I want to be able to deal with the transparency and everything that I'm looking at here properly. We're going to smooth shade our eyeball here and add a material. And this material is going to be called eyeball underscore lens. And it's going to be a pretty easy material to create. Um, its transmission is going to be really high so that it's basically just perfectly transparent and its roughness is going to be quite low. And its index of refraction is set to 1.45. If you Google the human eyeball's index of refraction you'll see it's about, if I remember correctly, 1.37 or it might be 1.357. I can't quite remember but that ought to get us within striking distance to have this thing refracting properly. So that's pretty good. Um, next thing I'm going to do, I need to create a material for um, the interior for the sclera. So let's go to edit mode here and I'm going to hide the lens and I'll also create a new material slot for a new material. We'll call this eyeball underscore sclera. And our base color for this is actually going to be an image texture. And previously I have created just this really simple eyeball texture in Adobe Illustrator. I followed a tutorial that I found on Google somewhere. And that creates a green eyeball. I can go back into Illustrator and change the, change the um, color of it. But we'll just use a green one for now and I'm going to add this image or texture as my image for the sclera here and then I need to select all of these interior vertices here and assign that second material to that shape to the to the geometry. Okay, and you can see that this is pretty messed up. So let's go to U, our UV editing now. And again, I'm going to go into a rendered preview. And I am going to look at this from well, let's see. I'm going to hide Let's see, we're in edit mode. Alt H. Okay. Just need to kind of get that thing out of the way. So I think what I actually need to do here really quickly is just light this a little bit better since we're looking at an edited preview. Okay, that's a little better now. So let's tab into edit mode and 
we can select all of these vertices and you can kind of see the problem here um, since this UV sphere by default is UV unwrapped in such a way that the triangle fans are separated in the UV layout um, I'm going to have a really hard time mapping this triangle fan cone here to the actual eyeball in the image. So all I really need to do there is select this center edge loop and go to my edge menu or control E and mark a seam. Then just select a face on one side of that and control L will select all of the faces on this side of the edge loop and from there I can just unwrap this again or if I want to be a little more precise I can go to a front orthographic view and tap U and unwrap project from view that will allow me to come over here and start really lining this up pretty well and I really just kinda of want these edges to correspond with the edges of this eyeball in a fairly believable way. Okay, and then I want this central loop here to kind of correspond with the pupil in the center. Okay, and that actually looks pretty good. Now, from back here, you can see that we're still mapped really oddly. So let's control I to invert our selection. You can see why that is. And all we really need to do with this is just scale it down and get it out of the way. It's all, all these pixels are the same value anyway. Okay, so now if I unhide the lens portion, you can see that we've created an eyeball here. So what I'm going to do at this point is unhide all the head geometry and we will move this up in Z. I'm not going to move it off of the x-axis yet because I'm going to add a mirror modifier to it and then select everything and whoop and in edit mode I'll move these up the reason I'm moving them around in edit mode again is so that my point of origin doesn't move. And this looks truly frightening. <laughs> it looks really awful. But let's kind of move that forward to where these eyes look like they belong in the sockets. We'll rotate them just slightly. There we go. Alright, so now from here Um, I'm going to go to my object data and my viewport display and turn on wireframe for these eyeballs and that will allow me to kind of be able to still get a sense of the gaze of the eyes and from here I need to actually edit the face so I'm going to go into vertex select mode turn on proportional editing again and just kind of start moving these eyelids to bend around the eyeball and I'm just tapping GY over and over and over again it's a pretty fiddly process But in the end, it gets us there pretty quickly. Okay. Now, at some point in my modeling of a face, I always end up turning on a subdivision surface modifier and turning on the edit cage results here so that you can see once again that affects it. That makes a difference in how it conforms to the shape of the eyeball. 
and so you have to come in here and readjust so this is actually a good time to kind of do that to turn on your subsurf modifier so that you can sort of see how that's going to work and then you have to give the eyelid a little bit of thickness so I'm going to extrude and then move back in Y let's probably turn off our proportional editing for this one and then I'll kind of make this fan out in the back extrude and scale it up and you can see that that's sort of turned things inside out a little bit up here so we'll try to fix that we'll deselect some of these faces on the inside and move some of these other faces backward so that they kind of melt back in there back inside the face and that gives the eyelid a little bit of thickness and again it calls for another round of adjustments here That makes it look a little bit better. And then from a rendered view, you can see that that looks a lot better. It gives, starts to have a little bit of personality, a little bit of life to it. And yeah, it's totally frightening. So I hope that's helpful, and good luck.